want to give you a brief introduction to time series analysis in this video. Time is an amazing factor. A little baby can grow up over time. The weather will change over time. Stock prices can change over time as well. It's very important for us to understand the relationships among data values over time. This is the purpose of this lecture video series. We want to learn how to use analytical model to analyze data over time. From a mathematical standpoint, we can present time series data in three ways. The first one is called an autoregressive model. The second one is called a moving average model. The third one is a combination of autoregressive and moving average models. Let's talk about them one by one. The autoregressive model believes that Rome was not built in one day. The data value at the current time spot is built on top of the data values at the previous time spots. For example, today's stock price is built on top of the stock prices in previous days. If we use the autoregressive model to analyze a time series data, our job is to identify how many days we need to look back in order to forecast the current value. What should be the value for coefficients like beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, and so on? This is autoregressive model. In practice, we usually use a short name, AR, to represent autoregressive model. The second model is called the moving average model. This model believes that the current data value is a result from previous unexpected events. For example, the current stock price can be a result of unexpected events like the US election results. The COVID-19 pandemic, a better sales revenue, the CEO change of the company, and so on. If we use the moving average model to analyze time series data, our job is to identify how many days of unexpected events we want to look back to forecast the current value. What should be the values for the coefficients like theta 1, theta 2, and so on. In practice, we usually use a short name, MA, to represent moving average model. The third one is a combination of AR and MA model. This model believes that both AR model and MA model have uh, valid points. So why don't we combine both models together in order to forecast the current value? In practice, we use a short name, ARMA, to represent the autoregressive moving average model. No matter which model you plan to choose, the first step is to make sure the time series data follows a stationary data assumption. This assumption believes that a time series data set should have a constant mean and a constant variance. The constant mean and variance should be the same throughout the entire time series, no matter where you choose a time period. In practice, when we are given a time series data set, the very first step is to draw the time series on a plot chart. If a time series follows the stationary data assumption, the time series should be pretty flat. The data value should change around a central value, as you can see in the charts, in the top charts on this slide. If the time series is not stationary data set, then you should have an obvious trend either decreasing or increasing in the plot chart, like you can see in the bottom charts on this slide. The bottom chart is not a stationary data set. Why? If I randomly choose two periods, let's say P1 and P2, 
obviously you can see the mean of P2 is less than the mean of P1 in the bottom chart. So the time series in the bottom chart is not a stationary data set. When we face non-stationary data sets, what can we do to transform this non-stationary data set into a stationary data set? In practice, we use a technique called the differencing to do the data transformation. Simply speaking, differencing means that we want to subtract previous values from the current value. On this slide, we are given a data set X. Someone asks us to do one-leg differencing. What this means is we want to subtract the four from five. Then we subtract the six from four. Then we subtract the seven from six. Then we subtract the nine from seven. Then we subtract the 12 from nine. Eventually, we come to the last data value 12. We don't have previous value to subtract from 12. So we will just stop at the final value 12 and exclude 12 from the final differencing result. Eventually, we get the, the results from the one leg differencing X star, as you can see at the bottom of this slide. Some classmates may say, this is simple. But in practice, someone may challenge you to do one leg differencing twice or two leg differencing once. Let's talk about them one by one. We just did the one leg differencing in the original data set X. We get the one leg differencing once result X star. One leg differencing twice means in the X star data set, we need to subtract the values again. What we need to do is to subtract negative two from one, subtract negative one from negative two. Then we want to subtract negative two from negative one. Then we want to subtract negative three from negative two. When we come to the final value, negative three in X star. We don't have a previous value to subtract. So we will stop at negative three. Eventually, we get a new result, X double stars. X double stars is the result of doing one leg differencing twice. Two leg differencing means we need to subtract the data value two days back from the current value. In the original data set, if we want to do two leg differencing once, we need to subtract six from five. Then we subtract seven from four. Then we subtract nine from six. Then we subtract 12 from seven. When we come to the value nine, we don't have a value two days back. So we'll exclude 9 and 12 from the final results. Eventually, we get uh, the results from a two leg difference in once, x prime, as you can see on this slide. If we can do two leg differencing, we can also do four leg differencing, 12 leg differencing. Can you see where we use four leg differencing and 12 leg differencing? Yes we can use them to process seasonal data. We need to transform seasonality into stationary data set as well. In the next few lectures, I will talk about all of these techniques in more details. Fortunately, we don't have to do differencing by hands. As long as you figure out what types of differencing you want to do, how many times you want to do the differencing, you can teach the software and let the software do all the labor work. Before we move to the next lecture, I want to clarify one point. Throughout this lecture series, I will focus on financial time series data analysis, but the techniques and the models you learned from this lecture series can be applied to a broader disciplines, such as 
artificial intelligence, machine learning research, pattern recognition, and so on. I hope all the lectures can be useful for everyone and happy learning.